Welcome back to The Daily Factor. Now, yesterday, British MPs debated whether to implement two petitions. The first petition was that of economic sanctions on Israel, and the other was for the UK government to recognize the state of Palestine. Now, the petition needed 100,000 signatures each, which did, of course, happen, which triggered this parliamentary debate. Now, to give us more updates on that, I'd like to cross over to Imran Shah. He's the CEO of the Muslim Public Affairs Committee. Assalamu alaikum, Imran, and Jazakallah so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, it's an absolute pleasure. Okay, let's deal with uh, each of them separately. Imran, I want to start off, of course, with the economic sanctions against Israel. When you spoke of air, you were saying, of course, uh, a lot of uh, uh, parliamentarians or politicians who, of course, sided with Israel were sort of like hesitant to be part of this debate. Just give us an update what happened in London. Uh, Imran, can you hear me? Okay, we seem to have lost uh, Imran there, so we are going to try and reconnect with him, and hopefully he'll be able to go ahead and uh, give us an update there. So, of course, uh, two, supposed, uh, uh, two supposed petitions that were brought to the British Parliament to go ahead for them to debate. I think we do have Imran now. Imran, are you back with us? Okay, Imran's uh, not back with us. So, of course, one of them is, of course, the potential economic sanctions again against Israel. Now, one needs to realize that uh, well, Israel is an ally of the United Kingdom, and of course, you know, one of its uh, one of its trade in terms of arms and that. So, we do have uh, Imran back on. Imran, uh, can you hear me now? Imran. Yes, okay. I can hear you. Okay, no, alhamdulillah, it's good to have you back. Okay, Imran, I want to start off with the first one, the economic sanctions. Uh, what went down in London in terms of that part of the debate? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, obviously you have some pro-Israel Zionist MPs, uh, and they were essentially giving the same lines and the same narratives that we've seen all the time. But what was quite remarkable is that you had other MPs that kind of call themselves friends of Israel, yeah. also say that they are sick and tired of the way Israel is behaving, especially of the Israeli um, uh, illegal colonies. Mm -hmm. And we want to see sanctions on at least the illegal uh, business that Israel is doing. And, and if need be, an arms embargo. So that was one of the key things that I found quite astounding that uh, Conservative Party and even Labour Party officials are, get, are getting really tired of giving cover for Israel. And it shows that the, the narratives and the propaganda that Zionists are pushing out there into the UK are now losing its worth and its currency. And, you know, we've seen, obviously, you guys know better than I do with apartheid in South Africa, as soon as the moral legitimacy of uh, apartheid is spent, everything falls down after that. It's, it's just a matter of time. And that's kind of what we're seeing here today. On top of that, we did see a, a number of MPs that were outspoken, completely and utterly outspoken in saying that we need, Israel is the main root issue, um, the apartheid, the occupation, and the constant cover for Israel um, violating international law. So um, this, uh, even though it doesn't have much legal consequence, this was the equivalent of us going out there uh, um, uh, protesting and speaking and mobilizing and making our voice heard. This was the parliamentary equivalent of that. And the normalization of BDS uh, and the support of the Palestinians and their demands is in spaces like this really legitimizes and uh, normalizes the struggle overall. So it's a very positive step. And just to kind of give an idea of just how historical this is. Yes, okay, we've talked about the, the Palestinian state uh, and the recognition of that in, in the past, but never before have we ever had a centralized discussion around sanctions on Israel mm -hmm. in parliament. That has never happened in our history. And you know, it's an important to acknowledge that. Imran, then the other part of the uh, petition was, of course, the recognition of the state of Israel. And, of course, we've seen many leftist governments, of course, come out and do that recognition. We haven't seen, of course, you know, the, the big players in the United Nations, the United States, and, of course, uh, the UK government. Uh, how was that received in Parliament in terms of the debate on recognizing 
Palestine as a state. So the thing is, is that there is widespread support for this, and even the government can't deny that there is support on this. The way that they get around it is by stating that we will recognize Palestine when at the right time is, and obviously that's a cop-out. So it's not like they can't deny the arguments towards the recognition of a Palestinian state. They're just falling short of actually doing it. Mm -hmm. And so this is where I think a change of government perhaps will make the difference because you know, we, we have a, um, a by-election in a particular constituency, uh, Batley and Sven. The Muslim vote are deciding who is actually going to get into power, and the central issue is Palestine. And I think now, like what we've seen with Sheikh Jarrah, East Jerusalem, you know, that is still happening on the ground. A number of MPs said that the expansion of colonies of of uh, in the West Bank is still happening, and in East Jerusalem is still happening. It's not just the fact that Netanyahu has uh, now been removed hasn't changed mm. the facts on the ground at all. Um, all of this is really a showing a watershed moment in the UK, and I really do believe that the next election in so many different constituencies, if not across the board, Palestine will be a central election issue. One final question, uh, Imran. If one of the two petitions, how confident are you that one of them will at least have success in the UK Parliament? So, I mean, just to be clear, this doesn't lead to any legislative um, process. What this does is that enables voices or views to be debated inside parliament. So it is purely just a debate uh, and unfortunately it doesn't allow a citizen to have that much power in terms of legislation um, uh, or like uh, shaping the law. But like what it does is that it means that we can mobilize politicians and normalize the conversation around BDS. And again, the more that is normalized, the less uh, Zionists have to uh, to harass, to demonize, to to, um, uh, to essentially trouble pro-Palestinian activists. And after we've seen the removal of Corbyn, uh, after we've seen the purge of Labour uh, pro-Palestinian voices, what this has done is completely mm -hmm. turn. Uh, so it, it enables us to have a lot of political leverage in which we uh, and other Muslim organisations, the pro-Palestinian organisations, can essentially escalate from. Imran Shah, uh, we'd like to say Jazakallah to you so much uh, for joining us. Imran is, of course, the CEO of the Muslim Public Affairs Committee in the United Kingdom. Uh, we say Jazakallah to you for making the time for us and continue your stellar work. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Well, that's all we have from our international updates. After the break, we'll be crossing to our community news. Stay tuned.